Hi everyone, my name is Liz. I read and welcome to another video. So I'm gonna film a spoiler review for the Throne of Glass series, books one to four. So I've been in the middle of reading this series. I've been reading it on and off for past six months. I started Throne of Glass um, during the summer of 2019. And so I read Throne of Glass and then Crown of Midnight during the summer. And then I took this big long break and I don't know why, but I did. And then I thought, you know what? I need to just read the series. Like I just need to binge read it. I was in the mood to binge read a series. So I decided to pick up the rest of the series. I kind of went back and reread a few of the last chapters of Crown of Midnight to, to remember what happened. And then recently I read Air of Fire specifically in January and then I was in a reading slump. Now I don't want to say Air of Fire put me in a reading slump because I kind of had a life slump. So I did actually start this and then I put it down for a really long time and then I picked it up and finally finished it. I finished this yesterday and it was a feat. It was hard to finish and we're going to talk about it. So this is full of spoilers. I'm not even going to explain the synopsis because if you're watching this video, you've read the series before. But like, I don't know what, like I was expecting to like be in love with the series and it's like a new favorite series and I love everyone and I'm excited to pick up the next book and I'm obsessed. And the thing that's most disappointing is that I'm not obsessed with the series. I'm just not. I like it. It's pretty good. I have a lot of things I like about this author's writing and I'm actually really impressed by the storytelling and the writing for like I'm assuming it's her debut. I don't think she has anything else before Throne of Glass so she's a very careful writer. I give her props for that like especially with when it comes to the planning and I could tell like she has a plan for the series and she has an end game and she's very careful about her twists and turns and there's a lot of surprises in each installment of the series so I definitely give her props for that but I'm just not obsessed and I can't quite figure out why like I always feel like there's something missing and I don't know what it is so I guess I'm just gonna talk through randomly <laughs> my feelings I guess let's go through like book by book it's been a long time since I read Throne of Glass but I remember when I first started, I was not impressed with the characters right away. Like I was really excited about the concept, um, but Selena herself, and Selena has been like a big problem for me. But when we're first introduced, you're like told right away how beautiful she is, Dorian and Kale. And I just like was really turned off by that. Oh, okay, here we go. Everyone's so beautiful and so dang good at everything. <laughs> so I wasn't, totally excited about that and then her as a character she was always like mentally calculating how she can take everyone out and I just felt like throughout the entire story of this the author was trying really hard to convince us that she's a deadly assassin and she has this backstory and we were never really shown that so I think that's my big feeling with this story and I feel like her character was so inconsistent and confusing. We are being told that she's this deadly um, vicious assassin but yet she likes really frilly girly things and I just found that really confusing. We were shown that she's very girly and likes pretty things and that's great that's totally fine but then we're constantly told that she's assassin so I couldn't quite figure out who she is as a character. I did kind of like her more when she became softer in this story but like I said her character was super confusing so I don't dislike anyone in this series I just I feel like I'm not really rooting for anyone and that I don't really care about anyone which is I think one of my problems with this series is like I don't know who I'm rooting for I don't hate anyone but I'm not invested in anyone either so that's that one I ended up giving Throne of Glass four stars and I wasn't like obsessed with this series or this book specifically until like near the end where things were starting to ramp up. And I'm trying to think if there was any real twists in here. I think there were, and not like a big major twists, but there were still some like good twists in here. Crown of Midnight, there were definitely more twists and I feel like we finally got to see Selena's true 
assassin side which i was thankful for and there were some like brutal moments in here and i did actually appreciate that because we were constantly told how brutal she is how great she is as as being an assassin and we like finally see that in here and so i did really appreciate that um, and there were some like really good twists in here. I did really like the romance. I did like the romance in Throne of Glass as well. Um, but I really liked it in here as well. But there were some major twists in here which were really thrilling and really exciting that I did not see coming. And I feel that way with these books is I never see the twist coming, which is one positive. Like I said, her plots are really good and I find them really interesting. And I feel like there's a lot of Harry Potter influences in the series because especially with book one and two, these are basically mysteries. They're structured around mystery and all the books are like that. So I think there's a lot of JK Rowling influences in the series, which is great. And like I said, I really like the plots. I like the villains. I like the overall story. It's just more the specific characters that are going along with the plot. Like I think I would enjoy the story more if the characters were more fleshed out. But I did enjoy Selena better in here. I really liked Kale in here. I like Dorian. Like I think Dorian's probably one of my favorite characters. But then we move on to Air of Fire and I just feel like at the end of Crown of Midnight, Selena, again, like, Selena is my biggest problem, I think. Not that I hate her, it's just I find her really confusing. I feel like there was a lot of growth near the end of this story, and I thought we were going somewhere with her character. And then, the, and then in the beginning of Air of Fire, her character regresses. Her character backslides a little bit with her growth and I found that really frustrating and I found it really confusing because I wasn't anticipating that. I didn't think that was the direction of her character and I think the author did that so the growth was more pronounced by the end of the story but I just found it really annoying. I didn't like Selena in the beginning of the book. There was an introduction to new characters in here. Um, I really like Rowan as the character. I find him really good but then like I found him a little confusing as well I wish because there's a romance in here when it comes to the romance I could see it from Selena's point of view her transition in her feelings I wish we saw that more from the love interest side and I just felt like when I finally transitioned into a romance like their story their relationship I felt like his side of things threw me off like I his change in behavior and his change in feelings was too drastic and I wish it was done more subtly and we got to see more of his side of the romance like his um perspective I should say because it just it just really actually threw me off and he changes as a character so fast and he's like almost a completely different person by the end of this book and totally different in book four so like I still like him as a character this is a spoiler review so I'm specifically talking about Rowan I don't need to be spoiler free because this is not a spoiler free review but like Rowan as a character I like him a lot I find him really interesting and I do like Selena and Rowan together I felt like I saw Selena's progression of feelings but we never saw Rowan's and by the time it was like oh they like each other I was just like wait what he likes her I wish there was a more I wish they she took some more time from Rowan's perspective so we can see that he actually likes her and is in love with her and I yeah so that's my big um one problem I have with their relationship like I said I like them together but his characterization I think could have used a little bit more work and I really didn't like the witch story in here I liked it way better in Queen of Shadows but I thought, I thought Manon's chapters were really boring. I know we needed the development and everything and the introduction to those characters, but I didn't enjoy it at all. I thought it was really boring. And this is my least favorite installment in the series. I thought Dorian and Kale's chapters were kind of boring too. I like Adian as a character. He's one of my favorites. He didn't have a lot of screen time or page time, I should say, in here. Yeah, this was my least favorite and I ended up giving it a three stars. The ending was good and kind of epic a little bit and again really good twists and turns 
I like the plot and everything, but three stars. And then finally, Queen of Shadows. I just finished this yesterday, and I think this is my favorite installment in the series, and Selena is finally who I wanted her to be all along. But one thing, she's a huge tease to Rowan, and I don't like that. The last time they're kind of together before the final confrontation, like I actually was really mad at her. I feel like it's just so mean um, for one thing and just like, oh, I was so frustrated by that. Anyways, um, I really like the heist in here when they rescue Adian. That was one of my favorite segments. But by the time we finally got to the end and the last confrontation and everything, I was just like, so done. These, I think these books are too long. I don't think we need a 600 page book four in a seven book series. I think these books are too long. I think she could have cut it down. I feel like it could be faster paced. I feel like I'm constantly waiting for things to happen and I don't know, I just, or just like make the series longer and have shorter books because I find it too hard. Now that could just be me where I just don't work well with tomes and I just need to change the way I read tomes. By the time I got to near the end, I was just ready for the story to be over and to move on. I still really liked this. I still really enjoyed it. Honestly, I think one missed opportunity was Kale and Dorian. By the end of the story, I was actually shipping them together and I think that would have been a more interesting story because it would have given Kale more agency because he didn't really have anything going for him in this book that would have brought more tension between Kale and Selena or Aelin. There was already tension between them, but I think that would have added an extra element because Kale wanted to save Dorian because he's in love with him, but instead it's just he wants to save him because he's his prince or whatever. I don't know. I just, and the love interest for Kale, like I like her just fine, but like she, she isn't really even much of a character. She's just kind of there. So I thought that would have been a really interesting story, and especially it would have like added an extra, just more stakes to the final confrontation. I think that would have been a really interesting story, but that didn't happen. <laughs> My favorite ending was actually Manon's ending. I find like she finally reached where she needed to be as a character. I'm actually more interested to see what's going to happen with her than anyone else. I'm also interested to see, um, is it a lead? But I really liked her chapters as well. And then Caitlin, I really loved that ending. That was really awesome. So by the end of this, I was almost feeling like, for one thing, I'm taking a break for a little bit. I was hoping to binge read the series and be happy about it. Um, but I think I need at least one book break. Um, I'll read something else instead, but I almost felt like, you know, I could almost be done at this point. Like it was a satisfying ending in itself and I'm not obsessed like I was hoping I'd be. I'm enjoying them. They're fine. Like this is the thing, like I'm always enjoying it while I'm reading it, but when I put it down, I'm not like, oh, I want to pick it up again. And I think the biggest problem is I'm not rooting for anyone. I'm not obsessed with anyone. I'm not super excited to see what's going to happen next. It's just like a pleasurable read, but then it's a lot of work because the books are so long and it's a fantasy. So I don't know if the problem is me because I always thought I loved fantasy, but I'm wondering if maybe I don't like adult fantasy. And I know this is not technically adult, but it's more adult than your traditional YA. And I like the darker themes and topics and I like the plot, but it's taking forever to get there. And then at this point, I'm like, what is this series even about anymore? I'm not even sure because how book four ended like the king king has finally died and like i know there's like another bad guy out there but like do i care i don't know if i do <laughs> um it's so terrible to say but i've been waiting to read the series for so long and it's finally here and like i feel like i owe my past self to read it but i'm not sure if i'm excited to read the series so as of right now it's a four book series four star series and 
I'm not quite excited to pick up the next one. When I finished Air Fire, I was actually really excited to read Queen of Shadows. And there were some really good things in there. And while I was in the middle of it, I'm like, yeah, this is a five star read. I'm really, really enjoying it. But then it just like kept on dragging on and kept on taking a long time to, to get through. I think from now on, when I read tomes, I think I'm gonna set myself a midpoint break where I just read half the book and then I put it, like I officially put it down, I'm like, yeah, I read half of it, that's great. And then pick up another read and then come back to it because reading the same book for so long is kind of hard. And sometimes it feels like you're not progressing because it takes, obviously it takes longer to read long books, but you feel like you're not getting anywhere when you're reading the same book for so long. I think that's like my biggest problem. If I had a goal, even if it's just like a mid book goal, um, I would feel more accomplished maybe. At this point, I still plan to finish the series. Like I'm not actually gonna drop it, but I'm gonna take a break and see how I feel. I probably won't read the short story collection, The Assassin's Blade. I probably won't read it. I don't really care. I am a fan of um, Sarah J Mass's writing and I see like great potential. So I still really wanna read her uh, Court of Thorns and Roses series. And I think it's very romance heavy and that sounds like something I would be more interested in. These books are not nearly as romance heavy as I thought they would be. Like there was more romance in book one and two. Anyways, I don't think I have anything else to say but those are my current thoughts on this series and I would love to know your thoughts on this series. Please comment down below if you've read these books before, if you think I should continue, if it gets better. It's gonna be a slog, but I think the giving myself checkpoints, giving myself mid book breaks will really help. Um, if you have any tips on how to read tomes, I would love <laughs> to hear your opinion on that. So please comment down below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you have not done so. You can follow me on Goodreads, Twitter, and Instagram. And you know what, guys? I'm going to keep reading. Bye.